What I thought I'd do today is I'd do a video on the Park Hill Flats built in 1961 1,000 flats housing 3,000 people now the reason they built them is that there were back-to-back -back houses here and they thought the way to deal with what they called slums was to actually put people in these high rises but within 20 years the back-to-back -back slums have become high-rise slums now, I don't think the actual internal work on the original flats was that good plus it probably wasn't a decent maintenance contract on it either now it's actually been renovated by Urban Splash and they're going to be doing John Lewis doesn't look bad from the outside but are there any Sheffield folk left actually in these flats so let's get down to the, the main road and uh, carry on from there as you can see we're down at the Parkway roundabout. Parkway was brought into Sheffield in 1974. We're actually on Duke Street, and that's an old blind shop. Just read on the side. You can see. I think that's why they create the heat for the building. But my big point was, I bet Sheffield folk aren't living in these anymore and the Haymarket area, the old rag and tag market and chief market would have been well frequented by Sheffielders living in these flats. When you think a thousand flats and three thousand people living in it, it doesn't sound that many to me. But just above it, and I didn't realise it, was actually Hyde Park. I thought it was all called Hyde Park. And Hyde Park was, or held about 4,500 people, and it was about twice the, the height of Park Hill. But for some reason, they kept Park Hill, renovated it. I actually listed it. It's quite incredible, isn't it? But occasionally I get comments from people on my videos about I don't like change, whatever. And I've got no issue with change, but the change needs to be thought out. Now, one of the issues we have is High Park and Park Hill were supposed to be slums. So you provide a solution and within 20 years they become the slums of the future. Now, my understanding was we've made a big mistake put people in these high-rise flats. So what do we do? We build 10 times as many across Sheffield City Centre. At the moment, they're for students, but I don't believe there's that number of students in Sheffield, especially when you look at the number of flats they've built up from Scotland Street up to the university. These modern coal flats are going to become the slums of the future. There's no doubt about that. Now, you can actually find old pictures of this area, the Park Hill area, and also Hyde Park, that's a bit more difficult, on uh, Google, and you can see the type of houses that was around here, the back-to-backs, but I'm sure they could have put new roofs on them, new bathrooms in. At the end of the day, you've not got a garage for your car on one of these flats either, have you? And they don't house that many people, you know, like it's just 3,000 people in these massive flats.
over this area before when it was called slums we had something called the Mooney Gang and uh, Chaletto came in to sort all this lot out it was to do with unions and also to do with betting and things like that and they said that they couldn't control them in these back alleys but like I said I think a lot of the houses could have been upgraded whether they rebuilt the houses whether they put new bathrooms in or put new roofs on them they could have uh, probably made it or kept it much more in keeping which I feel so somehow I've got to get around from here because it's blocked off so when I find my way around I'll pick the video back up so we're now back on Duke Street and you can see the type of housing that would have existed or shops would have existed around Park Hill before it was cleared my understanding is with Hyde Park it was actually cleared before the war and there was Sheffield Cricket Club played up there and I think they said you could get eight cricket grounds onto that area so the Hyde Park was built on that area but like I said it was knocked down in the early 90s so I don't think it probably even lasted 25 years before it became modern day slums so we need, there's lessons to be learned, yeah, let's have change, but let's think the change out because we don't want to cause another problem in the future. Now, if you'd actually renovated the houses that already existed here, you wouldn't have made as much money with you putting new roofs on them, putting new sanitary in and whatever. But they can make much more money from these massive projects, they probably get government handouts from them I can get back round here so I'll go around here I just noticed the pub round here in fact there's quite a few pubs still left or oh, working men's clubs park club there I saw one here, Red Lion, so this must have been Red Lion, but it looks like it's possibly somebody's house now. But no people around, absolutely zero people. And this probably would have been one of the main archer roads into Sheffield. So I'd be interested to know how much these uh, flats were sold on to people after it was redeveloped I don't know whether there's also rented accommodation in here but as you can see here some of this hasn't even been done it looks pretty gruesome on that set of flats just there I can remember one day parking up here for work. I, just, I don't know why I parked up here. I probably was living in a, the Mosbrayer at the time and I parked here. And uh, the car was still here after. And I mean, that was years ago when, they were, when it was in a rundown state. Now I'm on the main part of Park Hill but on the left hand side rising above there's another part of Park Hill but then behind here somewhere was Hyde Park you can see the plans on I think there's a video on Sheffield moving forward in the 1970s and it shows you a bird's eye view of all of this area But if you treat people like animals, they become animals. Now, somebody did do a video which is sort of pushed me forward to do this video. And what he was saying is that because 
there's a lot of jobs left in lost in Sheffield in the 70s the main cuts came in the 80s under Thatcher the steel industry was being cut long before that and what they said is a lot of flats became empty and that's when they started having problems I'm not so sure I think it was in inferior build quality inside and people like I said if you, t you can take the people out of the slum but you can't take the slum out of people if that's the way they are I like that board there success will be achieved only when citizens, whatever their incomes, no longer want to escape from their city at every opportunity. The disappointing thing is that where are the Sheffield folk in our buildings? We've got a globalist population now camped out in Sheffield telling us what they want. We don't want their woke agenda. Yeah, we want a, a cleaner, greener city, but not for profit. Now this is what I was talking about, to be modern is not a fashion, it is a state, it is necessary, necessary to understand history and he who understands history knows how to find continuity between that which was, that which is and that and which will be. Well that's my point, is let's have progress, but let's have progress. That's sustainable. As I was talking about, I think, uh, mid-city tower, and somebody said on there, I don't want change, we all moan about change. No, we don't. We want change, we want change that benefits humanity. What we want to see is communities that are thriving. Same again, there's no... Looks like that's not being done up there either. So there's an awful lot of this that's never been renovated. So I'll come back around the corner and stick the video back on. So we've got some nice billboards around here, haven't we? I've noticed one thing though, there's no graffiti around here because in the middle of Sheffield there's just graffiti all over the, uh, the boards and this is what I wanted to show you so if you look at the lower level on, on the development, that is Park Hill and then if you look at the absolute massive bit in the middle of the bike, that's Hyde Park. So none of this lot's been done round here, so come on Urban Splash, why are you taking on another project when you can't even finish this project? So it's good view of Sheffield from here. You can just see how the city's changing. And the really strange thing is, and I just hope people have actually realised. So they locked us down in March 2020 and look at the building that carried on. I was coming in every week through lockdowns and just seeing the buildings continue. Now, if you go across to Scotland Street and look up all the way up West Bartender Street you'll see exactly what I mean so we had a, a deadly virus didn't we pandemic but it didn't stop any of the buildings carrying on so this is like an outdoor theatre it's like I said this area hasn't been a renovated yet but I mean the building of this destroyed a lot of our, our culture and uh, where's the culture where's Sheffield culture around here Quite a nice walk down into town, it must have been great when the flats were first built, people 
probably didn't have bathrooms inside and they probably thought, oh, it's absolutely fantastic, this. Um, nice walk into town and everything. You don't really need a car, but one of the other issues is in 1960 they removed the tram network in Sheffield. I think that's one of the worst decisions they ever made. Because if, say, you live in these flats and you're working, say, in Attercliffe or anywhere else in Sheffield, how do you get to work? I mean, yeah, there's a bus service, and it was a good bus service in the past, but I think the tram network was far better. And it ran in winter when there was heavy snow. So you can see the difference between now it, where it's been modernised and where it's still being modernised. Looking at this, it says, what's it say, no parking, 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. I mean, I'm not having to go at people parking here. What I'm having to go at is that they're actually restricting people parking here. Now, I don't know whether, if you've got an apartment here, you have to pay for the parking on top of it, and whether there's an annual charge for that. But I'm hoping I can just get in and see what it says about the parking in here as well. I did do a video on, on this in the past, but I just didn't know enough about the area, and I've sort of researched it a lot more now. So hopefully this is a much better video now when I worked at HSBC we didn't have <laughs> decent flats uh, that I could have purchased and lived in Sheffield probably would have considered it if I got somewhere where I could lock my car away at night say in an underneath car park something interesting up there So I thought most of this had been renovated, but there's all blocks of it not renovated. I just want to show you the car parking in here. But I think there's an agenda on with Net Zero to actually uh, remove cars from the road. So there's your parking charges. I mean, you basically, you're going to struggle uh, if you live here with a car. So I've just been talking to somebody with a flat and he says there is an annual charge you can pay for, uh, for car parking. Doesn't know what it is. But the thing is, there's not enough, not enough car parking space. I bet you'd be lucky that 10% of the people living here could actually have a car parking space. And the £15 a day looks like it's for people who work in Sheffield. Uh, they can actually park here and walk into town. 
but 15 quid's an awful lot of money because I was parking in the uh, Canal Basin car park and I actually use Jose.com and it was costing me £4, I think, for 15 hours or, t- or 12 hours it might be. So that's, it's not cheap parking. Now one of the great things about the videos is that as me, as I go around vlogging, people actually educate me so I can do a bit more research. I mean, I was born in 1964 and when I came into Sheffield, my parents parked down at Maltravers or came by train to Victoria or we got on the bus to the A Market area. But my memories of Sheffield are subjective like I suppose anybody else's memories, but as an adult now, I'm asking a lot more questions than I would as a child. Now they say children are inquisitive. Well, I think I'm more inquisitive as an adult now than I was as a child. I just went along with the flow. I think that's the problem with most people. They go along with the flow. They're not actually living their own lives a lot of the time. They're living lives imposed on them. I mean, some of it's down to circumstances. You can be lucky and be... And other people have to struggle through life because of the circumstances they're born into, but there's always hope for everybody. It's just got to be a system. So that's... I think a walk all the way around Park Hill Flats and my uh, map of the world around Sheffield is uh, improving as I research it more and more but it's very be very interesting if you if you're from Sheffield to research on John Shaletto and also the Mooney Gang. Uh, now with John Shaletto he actually realised, and this is what I can't understand is, he brought in big early burly coppers, got them in pairs uh, on the beat, whereas, uh, I'm sorry but if you're going to be a copper, you're going to be a fireman, you need to be able to pass the actual basic training. You can't be allowed because you're the fairest sex we need people out there to actually do the job that they're paid to do and make the public safe you know at the end of the day so that's it just a quick walk around park hill flats hope you enjoyed it if you've got any comments on it love to hear from you